Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Nanine's Shorts. It must be Wednesday. Uh, we're here again, Physique Magnifique, in the basement where all the fun things happen at 387 Grand Avenue in South San Francisco. Again, we love this place. This is our home. We were invited by the owners and we've been here for a while. Wonderful, wonderful people. Stop on by and see what we can do for you. Now, today I want to do something um, a little different. We're going to dive into the mind of the bladed mind practitioners and, and how we go about really exploring things. And I thought today would be a great day to go Karate Kid. That's right. Wax on and wax off. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> I forgot specifically. But I'm completely serious. We're going to talk about that particular concept. How these everyday motions, even from painting the fence, were then later weaponized and became something more. But was it that Daniel Sun was learning techniques while doing these motions? Or what was really going on? What was happening in his brain that he could later recall and turn it into a technique or a motion in what he was doing? Now, we're not going to do any of the ones that they used in the movie. We're going to use something a little different. And before we get into what it is physically, and before I show you what it is, I just want to expand on the idea that we've been talking about, about the learning process we're going through. How do you take one thing, however small or however big, and if it's small, how do you expand on it? If it's big, how do you condense it? How do you make it so it's simplified that it can go in every other direction that you need it to? Now, I'm not just talking about mental concepts. Those are very important, as we've discussed before. They're needed to make things work. But now I'm talking about mechanical aspects, the actual physical movements that we do. What is involved in those things? So just like Daniel Sun, we're going to explore We'll give you a simple movement and then we'll see how it becomes or what it can become later on when we add the mental process to it. So, here it is. One palm is up, one palm is down. And we alternate. That's it, that's the movement itself. You can go back and forth. Keep it here, you can start using the rest of your mechanics and sway, you can make it wavy and make it like a hula dance. I don't know if Auntie Denise would like this one. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch Kali Conversation and you'll know exactly what I mean. But this is the motion. This is all it is. There's nothing really to it, but it's the understanding that goes behind it that's going to make it become so much more. Now, Rick uses this idea with students. Even before they start class, he gives them this simple movement. Now, it doesn't mean much at the beginning because they have nothing behind them. Those of you who have been practicing for a while, if you've been watching the shows, which I know you have, because you guys are great supporters, you will start already thinking, well, what more is there behind that? You start asking questions and some of you may have already made connections to what this simple motion can become. But even before we get to that, in its most simple mechanic sense, it is the rotation of the wrist and everything that's involved in it. Because of course, the whole body is connected. So while this is a simple motion, it does require a lot of other things to be accomplished. If you want to do it with some more panache, you can use the rest of the body and you can practice it that way. How does that translate with something like sticks though? Well, you're not usually swinging two sticks at the same time unless you're doing an exercise or you're doing double sticks, but even then it's one hand at a time. So I'm just gonna use one stick for now. So as you can see, when we do our angle one here, you can argue that the palm is up, but when we go all the way down in chamber, we don't keep our palm here. Most of us, without realizing, automatically turn our palm down. And that's where we end up here. So, what am I saying? 
Well, all I'm saying is that that motion is involved in a lot of the things that we already do. Palm up, palm down, whether we're coming across or coming back the other way. These are our diagonal strikes, no necessary number, whatever numbers you have or recognize them as. That's not the point. The point is to recognize what the mechanics are doing in order to accomplish these movements. Can we understand them? Either take them from the techniques that we've already learned and break them down by understanding the components, the denominator of the mechanics themselves. So then we can apply them to everything else. Because it's not just sticks that we use. We also use knives and other weapons and even empty hands. Like, for example, and I haven't practiced this, so please don't judge me too harshly, karate people. I don't know it to any extent other than what I've seen. But the punch. Now, if you notice, there's a rotation that happens, and those who practice it know it even better. And when you throw another punch, one pulls back, it's a pulley system, right? And that's a lot of the same ideas that you're taught. But if you pay attention to this and this, one palm is up, one palm is down, and you switch. Now, this happens in a linear sense, so it's not back and forth like this, but the mechanics are still the same. Because regardless of what idea you use, what technique, the body is the body and the mechanics are the mechanics. So if you can simplify those motions to its root and really understand its simplicity, then it becomes a lot easier to apply it to everything else that you do. Because now your brain automatically recognizes, oh, I know what that is, or at least I have an idea on how to do it. It's not about learning something new, but expanding now on what you already understand. Now for the next part, I want to explore a little further because like I said, it's not just the sticks, not just empty hands that this plays a part in. So I'm going to invite my Uki. <laughs> <laughs> the irony in Rick it. Ramos. Hey everybody. Nice to you, sir. Hello again. All right. Ooh, so nice this is one of your, your favorite things to do with your students, right. not the knife, though. just this particular. Yeah, episode. this uh, this Do you whole have a thing. Name for it? No, I don't. Oh, we have a name. It's yet. just the wavy thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't bother the titles here. For, we don't bother the titles. <laughs> the wavy thing. <laughs> but or in honor of uh, Auntie Denise, the hula. <laughs> the hula. There you go. That works. <laughs> <laughs> I think wavy thing will go with that. Wavy thing. Auntie Denise can kick our ass. Yeah, she might hurt Both of us. She might hurt us. Anyways. Okay. As we were talking, we were discussing that this is just a rudimentary understanding of the mechanics themselves. The mechanics right. that are involved in many, many motions. Right. And, and I might add, folks, um, before we get too further mm -hmm. down the road and we don't get to say this, um, the reason why I have the students do this even before they become actual students is to tap into their brain, mm -hmm. to get that already into the, the cerebral cortex, as they say in Star Trek. Right. Uh, to get this motion. Because there's it, no connecting pieces, it's nothing. easy to do. Right. So it's like, oh, I can do it. I don't have no idea why I'm doing it. Exactly. But so it's there. when we do put something to it, they realize, oh, wait, that's the thing you should have made in the very beginning. For example, so the connection kicks in. So there. Our knife tapping drill. Mm -hmm. Okay. The stab comes in a high line, right? It's palm down. But then we switch over to a cut. Palm up, and we go again, and cut. Now, if you notice, I'm doing the same exact thing. <laughs> We're matching the same movement. Now, instead of learning something completely new, we're just learning to apply the same mechanics in a different way, giving a different sense to it. Even the idea of stabbing. If I stab palm down and you deflect out, it's a lot easier to push, right? But if I do palm up, my mechanics are a lot stronger. It's a lot harder for you to actually deflect this. Right. 
So even just the understanding of where your hands are at that particular moment can give you a sense of where you're strongest. Yeah, and fascinatingly enough, if, if I do have this hand down, mm. I try to go straight into it. The mechanics <laughs> automatically does that, so it makes it even easier for them to push it away. Right. Whereas here, I can get it go in a straight line. So go straight out, which is why the knife tapping drill is from the outside. It doesn't go straight in this way. It's awkward. Look at my wrist. In order for me to go straight out, I have to bend my wrist like this. But if I leave it straight, it's going to go to the side. So that's why the drill itself is this way. Comes from the outside, towards the neck, and down. Even the stab itself, because we've all seen this, the people that play with knives, when you go in and you pull and cut, that's palm down, palm up. Pakao grip, same thing. When you rip, you're going from one to the other and the transition is the same. You're just putting a different tool, different emphasis on it and using it a different way. So if we can condense that understanding, then we can use it for a whole bunch of things. And it's not just specific to that technique or that school or that art. It then opens up the doors to understand as much as possible. We take the knives away. One of everybody's favorite drills in Filipino martial arts, huba luba, right? We call it peri place strap. But, oh, calm down. Palm up, palm down, palm up. That's one <laughs> Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> but even still, that as its most basic idea, most basic <clears throat> drill that we use, can also, if he throws a punch, now I use this. What do I do? From here, palm down. As our friend Dennis Duarte says, put it in the pocket. <laughs> the details on how to do it are gonna change depending on each technique, definitely. But if you don't have to relearn the mechanics of it, the movements of it, and then just apply the ideas, right. would you understand quicker than having to go through the physical stuff first before you can get to the things that yeah. matter? And then you start to look at the mental aspects of it. And you start to realize, oh, <laughs> you know, we always have that catchphrase, so don't look at it for what it is. What it can become. Look at it what it becomes. And then it becomes so, so much more. And, you know, this is a good topic. Well, the simplicity of things is what allows it to be versatile. Right. Because a knife, at its simplest, is a piece of metal with an edge on it. If it has a point, it has a point. And it can stab and it can cut. That's all it can do. And yet it is used in so many fields in so many different ways. Too thick. Not just to kill somebody. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, very good. I like right. that. Well, like thank you doing. very much, Rick, for helping. Can I go? You can go now. Toodles. <laughs> so, keep it simple. You hear it all the time. You hear it in, in so many things, especially if you're trying to learn how to speak in public. They always say, keep it simple, and it becomes far more memorable. And maybe that's the point. So I leave this with you. Do this motion. Nothing more, no ideas, no concepts yet. Just get comfortable with this motion. Understand what it feels like for you to do it. Do you prefer to do it wavy? Do you more rigid? Is it up and down? And what does it become later on once you apply all the things that you've already known and learned up until this point? Will it enhance the things that you do? Will it remind you of things that you've forgotten? Will it start connecting the different arts that you've cross-trained with and blending them into you? Because again, it's a simple motion. What you do with it is completely on you. So, thank you very much for joining me again on Naeem Short. If this is the first time, thank you for watching. Please share, like, subscribe because I really enjoy doing this and I would like to continue doing it more. So, thank you very much for your support. Have a wonderful day. Till the next time, three, two, one, cut!